Hello everybody, it's Russ Curtis here um, with my green signature down here <laughs> I've been trying to write. Hey, I wanted to talk about um, push button technique. It's a part of Adlerian therapy and I think it holds some promise for uh, really the future of behavioral health. Um, it's been around a long time, uh, but, but let's talk about this to get a feel if this might be helpful for not only clients, but also for counselors. So let's talk about that. Again, this is Alfred Adler as part of his theory. And um, what you're asked to do with this is to ask a client, again, you can practice this yourself, is to imagine or recall a stressful event. And a lot of times it's what they're experiencing right there in the moment. Um, and uh, to connect, what are the feelings they experience with this? Okay, so they bring up the thought, they bring up the image of the stressful event, and then they talk with the counselor about what feelings are with that, you know, and that, and even what they're experiencing in their body, you know, a tightness, you know, in the shoulders, in the stomach, uh, so forth, anxiety. And then you're going to ask them, okay, now what I want you to do, and, and you always want to position this as, hey, you may not like it, you may, but this can be helpful for some folks. Would you be willing to give this a try? Okay, so it's always what you always need to position things well or front end load with clients on this. But you've just talked about a stressful event. Now what I'm wanting you to do is to recall a meaningful or peaceful or happy event. It could be a memory uh, that you had. It could be of a pet or a loved one. And ask them to call that up, invoke that image or memory, and then um, ask them to talk about the feelings associated with that as well. What they're experiencing in their body. You know, is the stomach a little bit looser? The shoulders a little more relaxed? Uh, the face feels a little more relaxed and so forth. Okay, um, and what you're hoping to do with this technique is to teach people that how what they're focusing upon affects emotions and affects uh, physiological reaction. Okay, so you're wanting to give them more control over what they're experiencing uh, by paying close attention to what they are focusing on. I, I saw this saying, and I might not be saying it right, that we want to watch our thoughts as we would a rattlesnake. I actually live in an area in, uh, you know, uh, western North Carolina where there are rattlesnakes in the woods and you have to be careful. <laughs> but it's like you don't want to be fearful of it, but we want to pay attention. Another term that you can hear is we want to pay attention to sloppy thinking. You know, are we focusing all on what's wrong and all the stressors and the issues without paying attention to also uh, what's going well? Okay. Now, I find this helpful that if you can also ask people, all right, with this image, this memory that was helpful, that enlivened you more, that lifted your mood a bit, that brightened your expression as you're paying attention to the person you know, as the counselor, um, is this something that you could put on your phone? You know, put, put it on, you know, when you open the phone as on the wallpaper or create a album within your photos of meaningful pictures, pictures that cause you to feel this way. Also can be on the desktop of your computer, and maybe you need to change that every day or weekly, you know, to bring back up these images. Here's how I think it can enhance counseling. As we just talked about, it can help clients recognize, again, the power of their thoughts and what they're focusing on, how it affects their emotional and physiological health, okay, even if it's just the tension within their bodies. I think for counselors, it's helpful because, and, and I'm, don't believe me on this, I want you to pay attention to the people that you like to be around, if it's a healthy relationship, I suspect lift you up some, okay? And it may not be a fake positivity, I would hope it would not be, but they lift you up, you feel brighter, you feel seen as a result. So a counselor, this is what I would ask, play with it, don't believe me, but play with this, is prior to a session and maybe during a session, Evoke a positive image. Ask yourself, hey, what would be the most joyful image I could have right now? What would be, what is a positive memory? Okay, and I've been practicing this, so I've got some just go-tos that my mind immediately goes to with some practice, and I can feel it. I can feel how it, uh, you know, eases things up because I think that lightness, I think people are going to feel and they're going to experience. They're going to see it in your face Another thing with 
uh, t- asking people to invoke a positive memory, meaningful memory, or what have you, is we know from the gratitude research that when we elicit positive emotions, it's literally expanding our peripheral view, for instance, which is telling us, and we already know this from other research, that it is activating more of our brain to be able to think systemically, to see broader and not so limited and narrow. So I think when you're doing that as a counselor, even if your client's not doing it, I think they're going to feel this and experience it. Try it with friends and family. Try it with your pets. I think your pets are highly sensitive to your energy. They know when you're stressed. They know when you're feeling good and joyful. Try it with them. So don't, don't believe any of this. But another piece of this, and I think Adler, I think Adler <laughs> uh, was actually really inspired. Um, But this goes beyond the reductionistic models of therapy. Now, what do I mean by reductionistic? You know, very kind of Western European American models of therapy, reductionistic. So if we can reduce issues to um, these parts, then we can apply treatments to them. You know, oh, we've reduced this to anxiety. We can apply cognitive behavioral therapy. Well, Yes, and, and, and cognitive behavioral therapy is an evidence-based therapy, and we should pay attention to our thoughts. I would suggest that push button is a way to do cognitive behavioral therapy. The strict CBT reductionistic folks would probably get really mad at me for saying that, but no, I think it is a part of this. Okay, but anxiety, if you've seen some of my other videos, is complicated. There are all different kinds of anxiety that you can experience. Our Western model tends to focus more on worry, rumination, which can then lead to all the panic, the panic and so forth. When it can be hypersensitive, it can be if we step out and look at more Asian philosophies, Ayurvedic and chakras and so forth, that we are feeling the negative vibes of others and that causes anxiety. It's not our self-esteem. It's not excessive worry. We're feeling that. So I think we have to expand beyond the very narrow, limited range that we see taught in a lot of theories, classes, and so forth. Let me, let me give you one example for me. Now, I've taught test measurement and assessment for 15 years, and I've taken the MMPI several times, the uh, State Trade Anxiety Inventory, the SASE, all of these gold standards assessments and had psychological workups you know what the very best and most accurate uh, synopsis of me was when I took when I filled out a zodiac profile, you know, as a Pisces and, and all these other things. And it was it, it, they needed to know the time of birth and where you were and all that stuff to align it. It was about a page, maybe five paragraphs, and it was the most accurate. Now, I know the psychologists out there are like, oh my God, I'll never watch this guy again. I can't believe this is what I talk about moving beyond the very narrow paradigm, which I see happening a lot in the psychological research and, and theories that are taught and, and think beyond this, okay, that there can be other ways of knowing. I just mentioned this and, you know, I live in an area, if you look behind me with the arrowheads where I'm 45 minutes away from the Cherokee, Eastern Band Cherokee Reservation. I find those arrowheads five minutes from my house. So I love Native American philosophy. I love uh, Ayurvedic philosophy, kind of rooted more in India, uh, more of uh, the uh, Asian philosophies of chakra and energy and meridians and so forth. So what does all this have to do with push button? I think it's showing us um, power of thought. This doesn't mean there's not terrible injustices in the world that we need to advocate for and work for. But if we're hopeless when we're seeing a client, if we can't elicit a higher vibration, more positive emotion when we're with a client, we're not doing them any good. They're going to sense that as, as hypersensitive as our pets are to our energy. I guarantee you people are. They've just been trained to be polite about it. So let's pay attention. Play with this. Don't, don't believe me, but play with it and let me know your thoughts. All right, good people, more videos to come. Uh, if you like this, please, uh, please like it, share, subscribe, and let me know what else you'd like to see. Talk to you soon.